Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video I'm going to show you how I made this picture. A white subject on a white background is notoriously difficult to get right, but done well can look appealing. With good lighting technique and attention to detail it's possible to produce a reasonable result white on white. And in this video I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. OK, so to start with the subject then. What I have here is some white gypsophila. And I've just placed this in this lab stand to make it easier to arrange. So that is going to form our subject. So I'm just going to pop that about there somewhere like that. OK, so nice little white flowers. Uh, but they are very delicate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, a large softbox as the background. That way I can control exactly how intense the white background is. So for that I'm going to use this four foot octobox which has a flash head in it. And I'm just going to place this just here behind the subject. There we are. So this is uh, probably half a metre away from the actual subject itself. So the next thing to do will be to place the camera. So I'm just going to place the camera just in front here like this. There we are. So the camera's pointing at the softbox with the flowers in between. And the separation here is actually quite important. Uh, you want to make sure that you've got enough space between uh, the subject and uh, the background in effect. That way you can control the two different zones of light. So for the camera I'm using this uh, phase one medium format camera with an 80 millimeter Schneider lens on the front of it. Now this is on loan to me from an aerial imaging company and I'm able to control this from Capture One software. OK, so before I actually turn any of the flashlights on, let's just grab an image just with the house lights uh, and just to see if we get any contamination. This software is showing me the setup on the camera at the moment. So I've got a shutter speed here of 1 100th of a second, a sensitivity of 100 ISO, and an aperture of f8. Now the aperture is probably quite likely to change, but it's good enough for a test. OK, so with these settings and no flash, what I'll do is grab an image and we'll see what we get. And I don't know whether you can make that out, but we are getting a very slight image here. Uh, so there is some contamination. And it's always something to watch out for. So like I said, I don't think I'll be using um, f8 as an aperture. So the first thing I'm going to do is change that. So I'm going to change that from f8 to f16. Now the next thing I'm going to do is something which is unique to medium format, true medium format cameras. I'm not going to use the focal plane shutter uh, at the back here. I'm going to use the leaf shutter which is in the lens. That will allow me to uh, synchronize the flash at virtually any speed. OK, so what I can do is change the shutter on the software here from focal plane to leaf. And with that change made, I can now change the shutter speed from 1 100th to 1 1000th. And with those new settings, I'll grab another image and we should have no contamination at all this time. Yes, there we are. So there's no picture whatsoever. So all the light that we add now is the only light which is going to affect the subject. So the first thing I want to do is set up the light at the background. So I'll turn that on. And at an arbitrary energy level, we'll just grab an image and see what we get. OK, as you can see, it's all a bit burnt out. So this is way over exposed. 
So I think I need to reduce the energy by at least um, two stops. So let's do that. There we go. So with that change made, I'll grab that again. Yes, now that's looking a lot better to me. If I just zoom in, we can see that we're getting a white background and the foreground here is slightly silhouetted. Now at this sort of distance with this sort of subject, that's really about the best you can hope for. OK, so with the background light set about right, the next thing to do will be to light the subject. And for that I'm going to use yet another flash head. Here we are. I'm just going to place this in here somewhere, like that. We'll pop that up in the air a little. Now I've got a reflector on here, just to concentrate the beam a little, and uh, some barn doors here, just to stop any uh, stray light going into the camera or going onto the background. So with that in something like uh, the right position, what I'll do is grab another image, but this time I'm going to turn this light on and turn the backlight off. And now we'll grab an image. OK. So in this capture we can see that the flowers are actually illuminated quite well and there's very little light spilling onto the background. If I just zoom in we can check the focus. Yeah, and that's looking pretty good. OK, so the next thing to do would be to turn both flashes on uh, and grab another image. So I'll just do that. Yes, that's very nearly there, I think. I'll just zoom in to have a proper look. Yes, we've got a good deal of detail in the actual white of the flowers, and we've maintained a white background. OK, so with that now captured, the next thing to do is to go into Photoshop and do the post-production. OK, so here we are in Photoshop and I've loaded up the file of the image that I captured earlier. So we'll just have a, a good look at this and I'll just zoom all the way in to 100%. And we can see here that we've got lots and lots of detail in the flowers and the background is looking very white. OK, so I'll just fit that onto the screen. There we are. And I think the first thing to do would be just to crop this down to a manageable size. Now bear in mind when I captured this I used a 80 megapixel phase one medium format back. So I've got lots of detail uh, in the image here. So I can afford to crop it relatively tightly. So I'm just going to use the crop tool here and I'm just going to put in a specific ratio. As I'll be using this for video, I'm just going to use 16 by 9. Uh, and I'm just going to bring in the edges like this. There we are. There, that's the sort of thing I want. So I can just crop that down. There, so having cropped that down to size, the next thing to do will be just to make sure that the area behind the flowers themselves is a pure white. Uh, there's lots of different ways to do that, but the way I'm going to do it is just with an adjustment layer. So I'm just going to add an adjustment layer by clicking on the Adjustments tab here, and I'm going to add uh, a Levels adjustment. And I'm just going to reset the white point by using the White Point Eyedropper tool. So somewhere near the edge of the flowers, I'll just click the mouse, there we are, and that's reset that particular white point. Good. So now with that done, we can clean up the rest of the image, the very edges, etc. And the way to do that is just with another layer. So I'm just going to add a, a new layer on the top here. And on this layer, I'm just going to paint with white. So with white selected as the foreground color, I'll pick a paintbrush. Uh, this is quite a large paintbrush, uh, and it's also very soft. And with that, I'll just paint that down the sides, like so. 
and the same on the other side, like that. And should you accidentally go over the subject itself, because it's on a separate layer, you can always just erase that. So if I just go to the eraser tool, I'll just bring those parts back, like so. There. And with those slight changes made, that completes the image. So there we have it. By careful control of the intensity of the light on the background and the intensity of the light on the subject, it's possible to create a white-on-white -white image. And I think, overall, that's worked out rather well. OK, well, I hope you liked watching how I made that image. And if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear. And don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and hit the like button. Thank you very much for watching.